Mr. President. Senator from Massachusetts. Mr. President, I would, I would like to uh, thank my friend and colleague, Senator Hirono, for her words and her willingness to share how this bill could impact the millions of Americans with pre-existing conditions. And I, along with everyone else in this chamber, wish her the best and speedy recovery so that she can continue to fight for the people of Hawaii and the people of the United States. After weeks of secret meetings, Senate Republicans released their health care legislation last week. And in many ways, it is even worse than expected. It's no wonder the Senate Republicans kept this legislative malpractice hidden behind closed doors. For working families and the elderly, for the disabled and for those suffering from opioid addiction, this legislation is a death sentence. This bill takes a machete to Medicaid. It abandons people with pre-existing conditions. It punishes grandma and grandpa who live in a nursing home, including 25,000 seniors in Massachusetts nursing homes who are on Medicaid. It causes the single greatest rollback of civil rights for people with disabilities in a generation by taking away the funding for those with disabilities. It creates an age tax for those over the age of 50. It shreds a critical health care program for the disabled, working families, children, just to bestow billions in tax breaks for the wealthiest in our country. This is an amazing number. The richest 400 billionaires in the United States will get a tax break of more than $33 billion, which is roughly equivalent to the cuts from ending Medicaid expansion in four states. That is more than 700,000 people in just those four states who could be kicked off of their health insurance coverage to benefit just 400 billionaires in America who do not have to worry about their health care or their family's welfare. But for those who are going to lose the coverage, people with cancer, people with Alzheimer's, people who need opioid addiction treatment, people with diabetes, they will have their health care coverage slashed so that 400 billionaires can get a tax break which they don't need and they don't deserve. That's at the heart of this Republican health care bill. It's what it is all about. This legislation is of the rich, by the rich, for the rich. It's a wealth care bill for the, 100, the, for the upper 1% in our country. And it says to everyone else, your health care is going to suffer in order to take care of that 1% with their tax breaks. It's a more than $5 hundred billion dollar tax break to corporations and individuals making 200,000 or more. And it's no wonder that President Trump has kept his tax return secret because he knew he was about to get a massive tax break through this legislation from slashing health care for people with cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, heart disease, and substance use disorders. This selfish Senate Republican legislation will increase premiums 
and out-of-pocket costs while decreasing the quality of health insurance coverage for most Americans. This bill would result in many Americans, especially those over the age of 50, paying thousands more in premiums for skimpier health plans. It will put insurance companies back in charge of our health care by allowing them to waive coverage of the essential health benefits, like emergency care, prescription drugs, maternity care, or mental health treatment. And that means that someone with a pre-existing condition, like a cancer survivor or a child with asthma, may have insurance but not actually be covered for the treatment which they need. Because under this bill, the anxiety of suffering from an illness or the constant fear of relapse will once again be exacerbated by financial insecurity. Yet some of the most damaging provisions of this legislation are the brutal cuts to Medicaid, which already serves more than 70 million Americans, including, very importantly, two-thirds of all seniors in nursing homes in America are on Medicaid. Let me say that again. Two-thirds of all seniors in America are on Medicaid, and half of all seniors over the age of 85 have Alzheimer's, and 15 million baby boomers are going to have Alzheimer's. They're going to need some help. People have a hard time paying $60,000, $100,000 dollars a year for a nursing home bed. What are the Republicans planning on doing over the next 15 years? Slashing that funding in Medicaid for seniors in our country who will need that help to just stay in a nursing home or else they're going to just have to go home to their families who will be responsible for providing the care for them. The Senate Republicans doubled and opted for even steeper cuts in their bill than in the House version. In three years, the Senate bill will start the process of kicking millions off of their Medicaid coverage by ending Medicaid expansion in states around the country. It will mean 22 million Americans are kicked off of coverage. And then, as if that wasn't enough, starting in 2025, the plan will institute even more drastic Medicaid cuts that every year become a deeper cut than the year before, and it will literally mean death by a billion cuts for millions of Americans who will lose their health care coverage, especially those suffering from substance use disorders. Medicaid covers about one-third of Americans with an opioid use disorder and pays for nearly half of the medication-assisted treatments in Massachusetts. Taking away this treatment would be a death sentence for thousands of Americans. A vision without funding is an hallucination. The Republicans are saying they will find the will to take care of these people with opioid treatments. Well, you can't will your way to dealing with an opioid crisis. It's a disease. <clears throat> you need funding, you need treatment. And right now there are millions of Americans that don't have the treatment they need. Medicaid is the way in which it will be provided. But the Republicans are just going to slash it. And the consequences are going to be catastrophic. Now, here's what the Republicans are saying. To make up for the cuts to Medicaid, the Senate Republican health care legislation creates an opioid fund of $2 billion for 2018. Now, compare that 
to the $91 billion <coughs> in funding for opioid use disorder treatment that would be provided by the Affordable Care Act over the next 10 years. That's a $2 billion opioid fund in pocket change for a crisis that took 2,000 lives just last year in Massachusetts, 33,000 lives across the country, and if people were dying from opioid addiction at the same rate they were dying in Massachusetts, that would be 100,000 people a year. Two Vietnam wars a year dying from opioid addiction. They are going to slash the funding for treatment for these families. It will be a death sentence for these individuals if they do not have access to the funding. So the formula of this bill is simple. First, increase the cost of care so working families pay more. Second, decrease the quality of care for seniors and the sick. And finally, hand over the hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks to the wealthiest people in our country. Billions in tax breaks to people who don't need them, who don't deserve them, paid for by people who can't afford it. It's health care heartlessness. And to add insult to injury, it will devastate already strapped state budgets, which may be forced to raise taxes or cut other benefits like education or housing assistance to make up for the billions of dollars states will lose because of this bill. It is cruel, it is inhumane, it is immoral, it is just plain wrong to cut the health care benefits for those who need it, to give tax breaks to those who do not need it. That is the Republican plan. The Republican leadership is trying to catch a political unicorn with this bill, to make moderate Republicans happy while satisfying the most conservative elements of the Republican Party. But there is no treatment for Trump care. It is dangerous for health care. And there is no reviving Medicaid if this bill passes. This Republican proposal has never been about policy. It isn't about covering more people or decreasing costs of health care or making it more patient-centered. The Republican proposal has always been about slashing health care for ordinary Americans to give a massive tax break to the wealthy in our country. That is the Republican policy agenda. Not patient-centered care, because this will hand back over the power to insurance companies in our country, not to patients. And if Republicans were really concerned about reducing the deficit, then every single dollar in this bill would go to reducing the deficit. The crocodile tears which they shed about the deficit. No, ladies and gentlemen, they're shoving this money straight to the biggest number of billionaire beneficiaries than any tax bill in our country's history have ever received. They are, in fact, the party of the wealthy. They are the party trying to make sure that those who are in charge of funding the Republican Party now receive their payback in the form of tax cuts at the expense of the health care uh, uh, for ordinary people in our country. That is selfish, that is unconscionable, and that is why the Democrats are going to fight this every step of the way this week in order to protect the health care for every American. Mr. President, I yield back the balance.